Um, again, uh, thank you, uh, Banshi and the, all the organizers of um, uh, the, the conference because uh, giving importance to um, women and diabetes and uh, you know, making this uh, an important session with um, uh, such great speakers and, uh, and and Benny did a fantastic job of talking about a very difficult topic. So uh, I have been asked to speak on gender specific approach to diabetes complications. So um, the first thing I want to say is one size does not fit all. Diabetes in women is not the same as diabetes in men. And I'll try to explain that very quickly in a, in a few slides. But the next slide is really the telling slide. We, we always, you know, just look at this picture. And what is the most striking thing about this picture is this. Only the pregnancy complication is depicted as a woman. If you see carefully, everything else, everything else, no, no mention of, you know, no picturization of women. So this is something very important that we need to think of complications of diabetes, especially things like heart disease or stroke. Um, we, we're, we're not putting, um, you know, looking at through a gender lens. And when I show you the statistics on how these complications are actually much more in women, um, I, I think that will change the way um, we, we look at complications. So traditionally, we, we think of all these complications, you know, for example, the, the stroke and heart disease and, and, and nephropathy and retinopathy and neuropathy, even dental health is, is mentioned in this slide. But what we need to do is, um, and, and we know from, again, from looking at this picture, that all of these complications seem to be higher in women. And if you look at type one diabetes, um, even higher. So very high risk for women when it comes to, you know, diabetes related complications. The reasons are many, but what I want to do today, another point is start change the traditional thinking of just thinking of those complications, but start thinking of cancer, fractures, mental health, um, communicable diseases. Uh, COVID taught us a big lesson about how, you know, diabetes is a very, very big risk factor. And, um, and also fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver, all of these as complications of diabetes, because I just want to show you one more thing. Cancer has overtaken vascular disease as leading cause of excess death associated with diabetes. And this was published in the Lancet earlier this year. And, you know, I would urge everyone to, 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 to look at this because um, this is going to change the way we think about um, how we approach women, what we prescribe to them, uh, and um, you know how we do the cancer surveillance, and not leave it to the um, you know for them to develop the cancer and then go for a, a follow up. We need to be their primary care physicians in terms of cancer prevention. So when it comes to um, you know gender versus sex, um, the the biologic sex is just you know, male versus female, um, but gender actually takes into account economic, behavioral, environmental factors. And this is a very big um, part of, um, you know, looking at a woman. And therefore we need to look at gender as a social determinant of health. So in addition to the biologic sex uh, conferring some, some risks, there is also epigenetic modifiers, and then these so the social determinants of health and gender itself as a social determinant of health. And you can see how throughout from the time that a baby is conceived till adult life and later on, how these have a, uh, this interplay happens. And then this is the physiologic and pathophysiologic sex differences. To start with, therefore, we are not having a, the playing field is not even. Very big differences between men and women. So that has an impact on um, both in terms of what drives the diabetes and also in terms of uh, complications. So the drivers of diabetes in women are very different. In addition to the usual urbanization, globalization, sedentary lifestyle, which applies to both men and women, you know, women have unique things like pregnancy, more pregnancies they have, greater the risk, gestational diabetes, 
10 times uh, future risk of type 2 diabetes, PCOS, 4 to 7 times future risk of type 2 diabetes, menopause, there's lots of body composition, metabolic changes at the menopause, then mental stress, um, you know, women are as the are caregivers and, and, and go through a, you know, more stress, and, and therefore, um, all these are drivers of diabetes. And I also want to mention poverty itself is a big driver of diabetes. And even in our country, and 70% of the world's poor are women, even in our country, um, in, the, in all the, I think, seven or eight major metros, the poor are having more diabetes than the wealthy. So, and, and again, um, women are affected much more because of this. And why I'm saying this in the context of complications is not only in the diagnosis and care of diabetes, when it comes to complications, we really have to think in terms of, are they coming for follow-up? Are they taking their medications? Is the surveillance going on? Can they afford it? So therefore, one of the reasons why the complications are more um, in women is also because of this particular aspect. And here I want to tell you, the, the World Diabetes Day theme this year is access to diabetes care which is very important and I'm so thrilled. And also the tagline this year is, if not now, when? So if not now, when? So we really need to take this women and diabetes on a war footing. And what happens to women? The experience of diabetes is different. More serious adverse outcomes. The life cycle of women is different. We're always talking about lifestyle. We don't talk about life cycle. We have a completely 180 degree different life cycle. The socioeconomic cultural context is different. And then we know that, um, you know, need to look at gender specific health research and, and technology, gender inequities in healthcare, all this. And of course, needing to view therapeutics with the gender lens. All these are very, very important when it comes to complications. The lifetime risk of diabetes is higher in women. And this has been proven globally and in India. But even though there are about equal men and women having diabetes, higher mortality in women than in men across the globe, and especially in Southeast Asia, especially in our country. And why is that so? That's very, the moment we look at this mortality data, and this is 2013 IDF, but that is the same thing going forward as well. Why is that the case? Uh, for two reasons. One, um, the, the non-communicable disease issue is, um, is, is very big and COVID is also going to roll back a lot of the progress we have made. And due to resource uh, limitations and um, you know, diversion of human resources, priority, deprioritization, so many things are going to happen. So if you look at the leading causes of death among women, the top three, four, five are all the, the non-communicable diseases. And many of these are caused by diabetes, which is why in women, we need to pay a lot of attention to complications. So first one I'll talk about is women and heart disease. We think about breast cancer, we think about other things, but we don't think about heart disease as a killer of women. And in this um, you know, uh, big data, you can see greater increase in mortality in women and greater increase in burden of heart disease in women. And the risks are usually due to obesity and diabetes and um, uh, you know, other dental infections and things like that. A tobacco use is um, less than the Western countries, but it's actually on the rise in our country. In this data, you can see whether it is age adjusted or multiple adjusted, women have a much higher risk of overall um, cardiovascular risk and mortality. Confirmed by the Framingham data, you can see not only coronary artery disease, but cardiac failure, all CVD events much higher in women. The, one of the reasons is the symptoms that women have when they have heart disease is also different. It may be fatigue, it may be shortness of breath, it may be GI symptoms, it may be other things. And we are looking at that traditional elephant sitting on my chest kind of symptom that may not be there in, in women. So we need to be aware of that. And the nurses health study also showed that even before the diagnosis of diabetes, women have a, a, almost a three times higher risk 
of uh, cardiovascular uh, CV risk. And, and why that is important? Um, we need to think of this. Is the clock starting to tick earlier in women when it comes to cardiovascular risk? And look at this. This is the CARS data published by Dr. Mohan and Dr. Nikhil Tandon from Chennai and Delhi and Karachi, which shows that pre-diabetes, which is the, what I'm talking about, the clock starting to tick earlier, is higher. The dotted lines are, are women. So you, the, the, the clock is starting to stick earlier in women, even in much higher pre-diabetes. And there are also sex disparities in control and treatment. Women are not given the, the, the statins they need. They are not given the, 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 the workup that they need and the, the, the prescription for um, preventing cardiovascular disease. So this is very important to keep in mind. Another thing that confers a big um, you know, risk, cardiovascular risk, is actually um, you know, high, high risk pregnancy, especially gestational diabetes, um, you know, uh, uh, pregnancy associated hypertension, small for gestational age and preterm delivery. These four complications uh, increase the risk of future chronic disease in women. And so pregnancy should be viewed as a window to future chronic disease. So we need to stop, I mean, continue to think of the traditional risk factors but have to start thinking of hypertension, diabetes, small babies, and preterm delivery in women as risk for future uh, heart disease. And we know how high the risk of GDM is. I just want to show you here, if you look at GDM alone, the, the hazard ratio is, is much higher and this confers independently a risk for women. What about stroke? Association with diabetes and stroke found in women much more than in men is one important study from Diabetologia. But look at this one, big, huge systematic review and meta-analysis. This showed the excess risk of stroke associated with diabetes was significantly higher in women than men, independent of all the other CV risk factors. So both big heart disease, big stroke, both higher in women. What about depression? At baseline, depression is higher in women. In diabetes, two times higher in women with diabetes. Therefore, what does diabetes, what does depression do to diabetes? Depression and A1C, the greater the depression, higher the A1C. Come, you look at uh, risk of CV disease, the greater the number of years of diabetes, and, and if they have depression, greater their risk of you know, CV disease. And also, um, according to treatment of diabetes stratified by depression, and even, you know, you look at the people who are on OHAs or on insulin, whatever they're on, no treatment, everywhere, if they have depression, this is in women, their outcomes are poorer. So these are all compounding their complication risk. So uh, very, very important that, um, that we pay attention to women's mental health. I want to stress this important point that cancer is something we should think of as a complication of diabetes. Only when we start giving it that importance, we, because it is a bi-directional relationship, cancer affects diabetes control, diabetes control affects cancer. So in this very large, um, very important study, um, what they showed um, was, um, okay, one second. What they showed was that women have a 27% higher risk of cancer compared to women without diabetes. Men have a 17% higher risk of cancer compared to men without diabetes. So women have a much higher risk of cancer also. So I'll just quickly run through this. Um, yeah, this one shows people with diabetes have higher risk of cancer. Second thing, women have greater risk than men. And then you take certain cancers, breast cancer, endometrial cancer, colorectal cancer, certain lung cancers, all of these things are much higher in, in women with diabetes. The one interesting thing, I just want to put it out there, prostate cancer is less in men with diabetes. So something to you know, celebrate. So what about when diabetes meets menopause? I just want to add a couple of points to what Benny has already talked about. HDL goes down within six months of the menopause. LDL goes up 
within six months of the menopause, altering the risk profile of women, um, you know, after the menopause, and the, which is why women after the menopause are at greater risk for their body composition changes have happened, lipid changes have happened, and these are worse in people with diabetes. So need to keep in mind and be more aggressive in taking care of these women. As I already mentioned about fractures, the in diab data showed after gender stratification, diabetes was a risk factor for fracture only in women. This is our Indian data. And to answer uh, Rahul's question, um, this is multiple mechanisms why the bone is more fragile in people with uh, diabetes. Uh, and Benny very nicely told us there are my, my macro and micro architecture changes. Quality of bone is changing. But I want to mention two things. The higher the A1C, greater the risk. Longer the diabetes, greater the risk. So we need to make all those adjustments. But keep in mind these two, this medication. Clearly, um, uh, thiazolidine dions increase risk of fractures and osteoporosis. I don't use them in my practice at all in women. As far as SGLT2, I think we are now comfortable using them and not very convinced that they actually cause any um, you know, bone disease. But what can happen is they, it can cause some dizziness, people can fall. And very important thing to remember in diabetes is, or, or, in, or in osteoporosis is only if you fall, you usually fracture. So the, anything that increases risk of falls will make you fracture more, whether it's retinopathy, neuropathy, uh, hypoglycemia, um, you know, problems with uh, you know, foot ulcers, orthostatic hypotension, or taking medicines that can cause you to get dizzy and fall. So let's be careful about what we use. Give fall prevention advice to our patients in detail to our patients with diabetes. One other complication I want to talk about is the non-alcoholic fatty liver. Typically, it's more in men. We, we've known that. But there is a change in people after the menopause. This is a lovely slide that tells us um, how in, in certain things uh, like um, the, the, the inflammation, uh, may, you know, males are more than, uh, you know, or, or, I mean, equal to women and certain things uh, like fatty acid oxidation, um, you know, women are more than men. So postmenopausally, women seem to have greater risk of non-alcoholic fatty liver, liver disease. So it, checking for ALT, AST should become a routine part of, for complications. So all our traditional surveillance for complications like BP checkup and monitoring weight and, and, and lipid profile and the ALT, AST. Now we should also definitely, and of course, eye checkup and looking for microalbumin, BUN, creatinine, EGFR. We should now include cancer screening, simple things, oral cancer, um, colorectal cancer, pap smears, um, you know, breast self-exam, uh, mammography when it is appropriate. All of these things should come into our purview because I think there are more diabetologists and endocrinologists and physicians doing diabetes than there are oncologists. And the moment we include this into our preventive care program, we're actually helping our oncology colleagues in a big way. So in addition to doing all this, we have to start looking at gender as a social determinant of health and taking into account that many things are different for women from finances to education to employment to uh, you know their other experiences so that has to be factored in when we are prescribing treatment and women you know they love whatsapp and information and the, so there is more diabetes misinformation disinformation right now than any other time so we need to give them all the right information about why they need to come in for these, you know, um, A1Cs and um, uh, BUNs and creatinines and, and DEXAs and mammograms and tests um, on a regular basis. They need to be vaccinated for, um, for um, you know, pneumovax and flu vaccines and COVID vaccination so that we are doing everything possible to improve their diabetes and we shouldn't let them have poor quality of life or die because of a fracture or die because they got COVID or die because they, uh, you know, developed a, a stroke or heart disease about which we didn't do anything. So when it comes to women, 
we need to take a, a life course approach from from the time they are inside their mom um, all the way up to you know uh, old age take a life course approach each time because our life cycle is completely different and therefore only that really is is going to help us the other thing that we can do solution is we need to have gender specific guidelines i've been talking about this i'm hoping that at least by 2022 the, when the guidelines come out that there will be a section where they are telling what should we do about for if it the patient is a woman versus the patient is a man um, not just her desire to get pregnant or not that's that's one important part but that's just one part what about her contraception what about her bone health what about her cardiac health what about um, you know obesity what about other things that that are relevant to women so this is very important that we have gender specific guidelines i think uh, that is my last slide and i really really appreciate um, you know banshi for including this talk because Uh, the more these kind of um, you know con- sessions are done in meetings uh, the more the awareness about everything um, about women and diabetes increases um, thank you so much